One time my sister couldn't remember Pandora's name. She kept going, you know, you know who I mean. Holy Miranda, you know who I mean. Pandora, Holy Miranda. Hello humans, my name is Dale Kingsmill. Apparently, I've never covered the story of Pandora on this channel. Like I definitely did it way back when, but I think I think it was lost to the horrors. So I, I believe, I feel it in my soul, it's time to tackle it again, right here, right now. Pandora is one of those myths that's super well known and popular, but actually pretty jumbled and threadbare in the source material. Inevitably, you end up having to kind of cobble together a coherent story from kind of the best bits of different versions. I laughed so hard while I was re-researching for this. There was this quote from Robert Graves, he says, Hesiod's account of Pandora is not a genuine myth, but an anti-feminist fable, probably of his own invention. It's so real. Hesiod was just so crabby while he was working on Works and Days. It's really just him complaining a lot. And then don't even get me started on Theogony. Like he says, Zeus who thunders on high made women to be an evil to mortal men, with a nature to do evil, and he gave them a second evil, to be the price for the good they had. Whoever avoids marriage and the sorrows that women cause, and will not wed, reaches deadly old age without anyone to tend his years. And though he at least has no lack of livelihood, for he lives yet, when he is dead his kinsfolk divide his possessions among them. And as for the man who chooses the lot of marriage and takes a good wife suited to his mind, evil continually contends with good, for whoever happens to have mischievous children lives always with unceasing grief in his spirit and heart within him, and this evil cannot be healed. Like, dude, are you okay? But all right, let's get cobbling. So context wise, just so that you understand, this takes place right after Prometheus has invented humans. He shaped them out of clay and he gave them life. Then he tricked the gods into taking the worst bits of animals in the sacrifices humans make to them. Then when Zeus withheld fire from the humans as punishment, Prometheus stole fire from Olympus to give to the humans to keep them alive. I do have a video covering all of that, so you can watch that right here if you would like to. Now, Prometheus Prometheus means forethought, literally, Prometheus. So he knows Zeus isn't gonna let his crime slide. He knows the forces of Olympus are coming for him. So before they can, Prometheus prepares. He won't be around to protect humanity, so he collects all the things that could threaten them into a jar. Yes, a jar. The idea of the box comes from mistranslation. The idea of the box comes from a mistranslation. The world, the world's evils were actual, the, ah, uh, yeah. I'm gonna slip and die on this beanie. The idea of the box actually comes from, this is a nightmare. The idea of the box actually comes from a mistranslation. The world's evils were collected in a jar. Ah, okay. I'm gonna die, but I'm gonna take you with me. I'm gonna kill you first. The idea of the box actually comes from a mistranslation. The world's evils were originally collected into a large jar called a pithos. And that somewhere along the line got mixed up with, uh, what's the word, something like pic pixis? It doesn't matter to the story, it could just as well have been a box, but now you have a fun fact that you can annoy people with at parties, like I do. Prometheus collects all the bad things in a jar. Illness, despair, famine, all those sorts of things, so that they couldn't escape and harm humanity while he was gone. And Prometheus leaves the jar with his brother Epimetheus and tells him to guard it with his life. No one is ever allowed to open the jar. It has to remain secret. And as a final warning, he tells Epimetheus not to trust Zeus. Never accept a gift from the Olympians. Zeus hates me, and he'll stop at nothing to take revenge on me and my creation. Then the gods find him. Kratos, in one of his only active appearances in Greek myth, drags Prometheus away to the whole rock, chains, eagle, liver scenario. So let's revisit Prometheus' brother, Epimetheus. So if Metheus is thought, or sight, and pro is before, making Prometheus mean foresight, then Epi, meaning after, would make Epimetheus mean afterthought or hindsight. Hmm. What oh kids? It looks like our hyper clever trickster deity just left the guardianship of mankind to his brother the archetypal fool. Zeus had Hephaestus fashion a woman from clay, as Prometheus had shaped humanity before. The forge god crafted her a magnificent golden crown. 
Athena trained her in needlework and weaving and clothed her in silvery robes. Aphrodite managed to cover the fashion faux pas of mixing silver and gold by gifting the woman with grace and immeasurable beauty. And Hermes taught the woman to speak and granted her curiosity, guile, and deceit. The woman was named Pandora, meaning all gifts. When Hermes showed up at Epimetheus' door with Pandora, he said it was a peace offering from Olympus, a wife to make up for the loss of his brother. Now Epimetheus knew better than to accept a gift from Zeus. He had been warned. But really when you think about it, Pandora wasn't a gift, she was quite literally all gifts. That's totally different. For several weeks, the two of them were happy together. Pandora asking all sorts of questions and Epimetheus getting to feel like the smart guy for once, giving her all the answers. Except for one. When Pandora found the jar which Prometheus had left, she asked what it contained. Epimetheus started to sweat. He got all shifty. It was supposed to be a secret. He, he wasn't meant to tell anyone. Uh, you know, nothing. Nothing important. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Oh, but she did. She did worry about it. She worried about it very much. Pandora was consumed night and day with a burning curiosity. She had to know what the jar contained. And she had an inbuilt knack for lying and sneaking about. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, I'm... Uh, I'm gonna go to the bathroom. Yes, I'm going to go to the bathroom now and definitely not the room with the mysterious jar. So, uh, BRB. And off she sneaks to open the jar. The second she lifted the lid, all of the evils of life flurried about her and flew into the world to wreak havoc. She tried to slam it shut, but it was already too late. Everything had already escaped. Everything except for hope, nestled still in the safety of that jar. Okay, so hope in a jar, hope in a jar. Okay, we gotta talk about this. This is one of those age old questions. Why was hope in the jar of evils? Why is it a good thing that hope didn't escape if the evils escaping is how they're able to affect us? Look, there's no definitive answer. Some people have tried to say maybe that the hoping question is false hope and that's why it, it was a good thing that it was trapped and why it was in a jar of evil things. That doesn't make sense because because we have false hope, so it must have escaped. Maybe Prometheus was uh, thinking ahead again, and he put hope in the jar as a failsafe, so that uh, if the evils got out, at least humanity would have hope. But when, but when it gets hope gets closed in the jar, so 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 that doesn't work because because hope is still in the jar. Is it meant to be a tragic ending, like we're hopeless? I mean, that kind of lines up with Hesiod's general pessimism. Babrius suggests in Aesop's fables that actually the core of the story is wrong. The jar was full of good things that were gifts to mankind. Things like immortality, the meaning of life, the ability to speak to dogs, I don't know. And so opening the jar actually allowed those gifts to escape so humanity didn't have access to them anymore. So then hope as the only thing being caught makes more sense because then we've We've lost all of that good stuff, but we still have hope. Look, it's just, it's a thing they say. Hope was the only thing left in the box. Someone at some point thought that it sounded poignant and cool, and they were wrong, but enough people agreed that it, it sounded deep, and so now we're still stuck with it. Knowing it will help you at trivia night, it will not help you tell the most coherent story in the world. Hope in a jar. But that's the story behind Pandora's box, or at least, a story behind Pandora's box, short and sweet, but uh, but boy, that context gets convoluted. This video did not have ads, thanks to a sponsorship by the folks over at Accidental Cyclops and their Kickstarter for Surviving Strange Hollow. The situation, the deal is, it's a TTRPG that I happen to be working on that's based entirely on watercolor art. Lots and lots of vague and evocative stuff to come. You can find a link to the Kickstarter in the description below. Apart from that, I do believe that's it. I'm done, email this to your grandma and I will see you some other time. Look, we have to admit, Pandora's jar just doesn't have quite the same ring to it.